Jackson to introduce her panel. And essentially it is alumni panel. It's a group of students we've gathered from around the nation to essentially talk about what it's like to be on the job now in biomanufacturing and other areas. And Mindy is from Lansing Community College. So Mindy, take it away. Okay, hi. So um, I thought that this would be a good opportunity for us to learn from the learners. And um, so we asked a, uh, some biotech alumni to give us a view from the other side. Okay. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna ask them to do some opening statements. And then I have some prepared questions that they were given a few days to ponder on. And then we'll entertain some questions from the workshop participants. So we'll do you know, each question at a time. And uh, I'm gonna start with the opening statements. And if I could, um, I think to just make this go faster or more efficiently, we're gonna have an order of uh, Daniel, Marcia, Joey, and then Amanda. And then we'll just keep with that order for each segment that I ask a question of. And, and I was kind of wondering, um, I was trying to figure out how to emphasize them. Maybe if we all stop our videos for a little bit at least so we can see what they all look like and find them on our, well, except you, for you, or how do we do this? If you go to view and then show, I think speaker, uh, side by side. Okay. And then you'll just see each speaker with the slide, or I can just stop sharing the slides. So but. do we need to make all the students speakers too, so we can see them or? Well, you'll see them every time, whenever they speak. Okay. All yeah. right. Side by side speaker. Good. Thank you. Well, I was just trying to figure out how to place them see into them. our artificial room because normally they would be in a room like in a round circle kind of thing so yeah that's so all. if everybody sets it as a uh, side by side speaker. speaker yeah yeah okay, okay. so it's going to be danielle marcia joey and then amanda now for the opening statement um if you could cover these three questions where first where did you go to school for biotech um, where do you work now and how long have you been employed there and what do you do on your job? So we'll start with Danielle and did I pronounce that right? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Daniel. It's fine. Okay. I know the spelling is a little weird, but you, yeah, you're fine. Great. All right. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I want to thank, thank you for Nima. Thank you, Linnea. Very excited to be part of this panel. It's kind of weird and awkward hearing the word alumni because I'm almost a recent graduate. So, but I was trying to live up to that expectation um, and hopefully be helpful. So I graduated with my biotechnology associate from Del Mar College in Corpus Christi uh, in December 2019. And currently I work at uh, X Biotech, the uh, Austin based biotechnology company where they focus mostly on uh, produce uh, discovery and manufacturing and monoclonal, monoclonal antibody. And I, I work in the R&D department, more specifically at the discovery phase, so very, very early on. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marcia? Marcia? Did I pronounce that right? There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. Um, I go by Marcy or Marcia or Marcia, depending on what side of the family you talk to. Um, I, I also work at X Biotech, but I am in the upstream manufacturing. Um, we um, use uh, CHO cells to produce true human antibodies. And at this moment, we start with a, the frozen vial and work it up to 500 liters of culture um, that is doing producing the antibody. And um, then we, um, but we nurture it and grow it. And, and I have to admit, Professor, um, Fletcher, I'm actually teaching my team. I am a team lead. Um, I've been there a little over two years. I'm actually teaching them one of the first things you said in class to us during cell culture was you got to feel the cells. You got to talk to them. You got to love them. You got to nurture them. So, you know, love I, it. Yeah, so I come in some mornings and I'd be like, good morning, babies. It's a school day, you know? And then we have to work on the We do very good cells. Don't, you know, they don't come, 
I don't, I don't know when the weekends are. I'll come in and go, I know it's not a school day, but mama needs you to get up. And the, some of the people who join the team look at me like I'm kind of weird, but then they start to understand that of how you have to actually, you got to feel them. So mm -hmm. um, although it is, uh, it is, it is a technology, there's still a lot of uh, um, emotion that goes into it also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Amanda. Um, hi, I'm Amanda. I went to Austin Community College for my associates um, in biotechnology. I currently work at Fujifilm Biosense Biotechnologies of Texas and College Station, um, where we also do monoclonal antibodies, uh, viral vectors, and soon we'll be doing gene therapy um, once that center is finished being built. I've been there for three years and I started off in QC chemistry, um, performing assays for the chemistry team. I then went to analytical development where we um, developed those assays for both chemistry and the cell bio team. And I am now in quality assurance where I work on a team solely devoted for reviewing and auditing all of quality controls, documents, SOPs, assays, results, and so forth. All right, thanks. Joey. Howdy. All right, so uh, I went to school at Lansing Community College, graduated uh, in May uh, 2008 with um, an advanced degree in molecular biotechnology. Um, I Got a job the following month at uh, Michigan Biotechnology Institute in Lansing, and I have been working there ever since, so for the last 11 years, uh, going on 12, um, and uh, we are now MSU Bioeconomy Institute. We got absorbed by Michigan State University, um, and what I do is everything every single thing you could possibly imagine from start to finish um, in, involved in a fermentation, I do. Whether it's climbing in the tank and drilling a hole to install a baffle, uh, to install a, you know, a frit sparger, to making a solution in the lab, to pouring plates, <laughs> uh, to, um, you know, talking to clients about their process, troubleshooting fermentations, I'm a sen senior level member in the pilot plant. So, I, I made my uh, I made my my biggest contribution to fermentation control, monitoring fermentation kinetics and, and things like that, making sure that uh, everything runs right in the pilot plant. All right, thanks. Okay, first question. Um, so if you think about your first week at work in in biotech, was it what you expected? And what surprised you during that first week? So we'll start with Danielle and go down the line. Yeah, so um, there's always surprises, I think, wherever your job or industry or company starts. I think um, to some degree, it was, it was what I expected. Um, I would, but one thing was a couple of things that were very extremely surprising to me that I always expected industry being this high level, high stress, high uh, fast paced environment. And maybe it is in other companies. Um, my first week, uh, maybe maybe because even my first week, but up to date, it hasn't been that much stress. And I think part of that is because of the second thing that surprised me was that <laughs> every department within themselves, they're also compartmentalized or they're being into individual groups where they, it's, it's more of assembly line, okay, where a group does the discovery, then they push it down to another department where they uh, do the discoveries for different parts, then they do the ligation. So I think what was very surprising is that, and I, I had a couple years of experience researching undergrad and for projects you had to do from everything, sample collection, analyzing the sample, uh, processing the data, analyzing the data, presenting it, make sure it's uh, submitted co correctly and everything. But within our company, what was very surprising for me that when we did our discovery part where we found a molecule, we just found the, 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 the variable region or the region that's mostly interested for binding in terms of antibody stocking. And then after that, it was out of our hand. It was another team within the R&D where they would now 
develop that uh, molecule farther and now, and there was no stress about it. So that, that also leads to the third thing is that you do a lot of, there's a lot of redundancy. So those were the major three surprising thing, surprising thing for me. Um, and uh, again, uh, going to, if it was what I expected, yes, it is different than academia. There is a lot of less playing around and <laughs> doing things you want to do because that's why we all go to research, I guess, is because you just want to discover things. Um, so, yeah, yes and no, and I hope I, I, I was clear on that. Oh, thank you. Uh, sure. Marcia. Uh, yes, um, my first week was uh, very surprising as to, I was so gung-ho. Um, I was ready to get in the lab. I was ready to do things. I was ready to start learning, and I did about a week of reading. SOPs and uh, training, and there was I, the all the different um, processes and everything, and I I wasn't sure if I could learn everything that was presented to me in those first four days of reading, and so that was my um, what I wasn't really expecting, and my biggest surprise was, am I going to be able to learn all these and do these because we are um, you know GMP and everything is done by the book and. You know, what do I do if I make a mistake? What, you know, then that, that's where the, uh, um, the stress of the first week, um, the unexpected, because I had just come from R&D where it was a little more relaxed and, you know, you had a notebook and you wrote your thoughts and, you know, but QA didn't really care what your thoughts are. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these processes. Um, so it was learning to be more, um, more that I was going to have to learn to be more precise in my thoughts and my words and my notes and um and yeah there was a lot of reading so that was my my biggest uh surprise okay thank you um amanda so my experience was very similar to marcia's um my very first week was spent sitting in front of a computer reading so many sops and policies and test methods and it's like they, well, they still don't end. We still have to read them. Um, and yeah, it was really surprising to me because I, I thought, you know, okay, well, I have this, uh, so, you know, two years, three years of experience in the lab. I can go in, I can start testing things. I can run some pH, you know, right off the bat. And I thought I would get in and start doing things right away, but that was not the case. Um, but it was good, though, because it gave me a chance to fill my surroundings and and learn about the company before I started going in and, you know, making documentation errors and all of this. And so the SOPs were necessary and it and it got us into the company and knowing how they function before we went into the lab. All right, thanks, um, Joey. Are you there, Joey? I think he's muted. Muted. Keep uh -oh. muting myself. Um, so it, it wasn't, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of expectations. Um, you know, the interview process was extremely intense. Um, I was interviewed by the entire company. So like they sat me in the boardroom and there was 20 people came in and I got in, you know, and then we went round robin. Almost everybody had a question. Um, and then the, uh, a few people stayed and then the other half. And then the second part of the interview was looking at bugs under the scope, working in the hood and plating, uh, putting on sterile gloves for the first time. That was interesting. Um, and then going out and doing a melt checks on steam line and they, they would run me through what would happen or what I would need to do. And I, I just had to do it. Uh, so that was pretty easy. Um, you know, I interviewed well uh, I, I, it, it was the interview process wasn't what I expected. I thought I'd get quizzed. Um, but so when I started my first week on the job, uh, it, I did have a lot of reading. I, you know, first three, four days I had to read SOPs, um, and, you know, I do safety training, etc. Um, and so it, it yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't have a whole lot of expectations. Uh, it was comfortable. They like, I, I you know, I, I had the one class at LCC that kind of, uh, 
helped me transition to what I was already doing. I had already written an SOP, so I was familiar with an SOP. I had already taken ODs. I had a lot of microscope experience. I had a lot of plating experience. I've never worked in a hood, but it was, it wasn't too hard. So I, um, yeah, so I, it was, it didn't blow me away. It was kind of, uh, you know, I was already blown away when I, we toured the place. Um, but I, I, I instantly knew I had a mountain of stuff to learn and it was a humbling experience, uh, experience my first week. So. All right. Thank you. Okay. Er, next question. So what are the most valuable skills you learned during your biotech training that you used in your job? And we'll start with Danielle again. Sure. So, so um, I'm pretty much 90% uh, and that I do every day are comes from the skills that I learned at my biotechnology uh, classes and came with my biotechnology degree. Uh, it comes in terms of uh, ELISA, uh, so many things. Uh, we do ELISA, PCR, qPCR, SDS, uh, the whole discovery uh, aspect of the things, just working in lab. Every, I think even beyond 90% of what I do every day in the lab uh, and at my current job comes from what I learned uh, from my biotech classes. And I can't take, uh, I can't thank the, my instructors enough for them because uh, I felt very comfortable starting. The, there are obviously, whenever you start in a new environment, there are different things here and there that they do. There's different techniques they do. They pour the gel differently when they do DNA electrophoresis or things like that. But at the end of the day, the base of the skills is the same. And all of that skills I get to learn during my first call, first semester of classes at my biotech program and practicing for a couple of years and I was ready to go. All right, thanks. There, yeah, and there are more um, other skills in terms of like, I think they're coming up uh, later within this panel of when it comes to analyzing data and things like that, uh, such as um, calculation, things like that. So. Okay, sorry, I had to go back. <laughs> er. Am I sharing? I can, okay, there we go. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Marcia. Um, I too, um, I was very fortunate to have great professors and I had a, a great foundation for my lab um, experience. Um, one of the things that I take to my job um, as my skills get better is that, you know, when we were doing um, prepared labs for us and things like that, they didn't always turn out the way you wanted them to. Um, so one of the skills that I use every day is, is troubleshooting and problem solving and trying to, um, trying to project what I think might have happened and then looking at the big picture. But I think that um, experience, experiments in school that didn't go well taught me more than those that did. And I'm able to use those skills from, that I learned in school from them not going well um, every day um, that I'm at work. Okay, thanks. Uh, Joey. Um, the most valuable skills, uh, definitely, you know, I, I liked the troubleshooting. That was uh, problem solving, um, being <clears throat> uh, adaptable, um, open-minded, you know, being fresh out of, you know, the biotech program. I was, I was moldable, um, you know, but as far as like the skills that I acquired, you know, definitely it didn't do, I, I didn't do a whole lot of biotech when I, I went there. I mean, yeah, fermentation is biotech, but not what I learned. Like I, I haven't run a gel since Mindy's class. <laughs> I haven't, uh, you know, but I, I streak, you know, I do a lot of, you know, plating. I do a lot of microscopy, um, all those skills I had before I went there. I, you know, pouring plates, that was a huge one. Not everybody who comes out of biotech, uh, you know, a biotech program, can actually pour plates. We we have poured hundreds of, I've poured thousands of plates, um, you know. And uh, but 
but but me knowing that 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 kind of blew them away um they're like oh okay uh the cone of protection for the bunsen burner nobody knew about that nobody i was so surprised I'm like what are you talking about they're like well what are you talking about well the plume <laughs> from your bunsen burner it kind of you know if anything's gonna fall on your stuff it's gonna be incinerated so it kind of gives you this little cone of protection and we we actually will do that with some of our contamination plates, we'll, we'll actually just streak them on the bench um, to propagate those along instead of mucking up the hood. And so, uh, you know, and, and many others, pipetting, um, you know, uh, uh, organic chemistry actually <laughs> uh, was a lot of skills that I learned in that lab uh, translated to, um, uh, yes, it shows the importance of hands-on labs. The hands-on labs were just, incredible they were necessary uh yeah for sure um that's all i got all right thanks okay next question so what did you wish you learned in your biotech training in school before being employed in the biotech industry and then what skills did you have to learn on the job so danielle yeah yeah so um um so during my biotech Program. Our biotech program has a good comprehensive uh, uh, package that covers, that's pretty aligned with uh, Austin Community College, and they pretty much cover all the necessary least skills you need before you enter to the industry. Um, uh, I think f um, for me, maybe one thing would be I, I did internships during my under, uh, at my, uh, uh, during my biotechnology program, but those internships were most they were at uh, at school level academia and that's obviously much different than working at the industry and it's it's kind of a tough situation because where we are there's there are not a lot of uh, biotech in this uh, biotech companies so maybe having that one summer experience uh of working within the industry could maybe prepare you a little bit much better than anything could be taught in the class and then earlier i think bridget was uh was talking about uh, edx.org their website and there's another website called course era i think those are great uh resources that kind of go in depth about the whole biotech biotech field within the within the industry and there's some small details that they cover uh about the industry there's nothing big that i wish i learned in my biotech class there's nothing big that was lacking in my uh during my biotech training that was filled in my um in my uh experience uh one thing is that uh also i think Linnea mentioned earlier that they're offering online is a qa and qc and i think uh marsha was earlier saying that everything has to be by the books i mean it's a lot less for ours for for the r d aspect of the things but within the whole within the company there are things that you have to be getting comfortable but not being able to do like you can't take notes with you can't have pen at all pencil sorry or you can't. You only have to use a specific type of pen. So pen, pen. Um, so these are small things that you have to always be on top of. That remember, hey, there's always the small things that you have to follow alongside the big things. Um, and one good big skill that I had to learn on the job, and I was trained on it during my biotech program, but I never really kept up to it. But I really had had to do in my job is that all my lab notebooks have to very extremely up-to-date, detailed, and be very, very follow the rules because they follow the SLPs because all these notes, uh, they get sent to FDA for our products that they have to get reviewed and stuff like that. I mean, it's just now, uh, I, I, during my biotech uh, trainings, I was always told lab book is important, didn't happen unless you wrote it, but we always just put the data, data take this, a couple sentences, but now it's, it's a whole different, <laughs> it's a whole different uh, game. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Marcia. Um, I have to admit, um, through ACC, our on our biotech program, there was such a wide range of skills that were taught us. So that um, depending on what field we decided to go into, whether we were going to go into R&D or PD work or into manufacturing, um, I think our program had us very well equipped to go in it, with, our, with our base knowledge. Um, again, like Daniel said, the, the notebook, um, we did keep a notebook, but again, doing a notebook that's going to be reviewed by FDA is completely different than 
you know, your professor glancing at your notebook. <laughs> so that was um, um, documentation was a huge is a huge thing that I've had to learn on the job. Um, we, uh, I, all the processes, everything um, that I learned in school actually was a great foundation for where I went. I've just been able to uh, um, hone them in a little better, make them more, make them um, more second nature than, oh my God, I hope I don't mess this up using this pipette or using uh, a new piece of equipment. Um, I feel more seasoned now. Yeah. Where when I first started, I, I did feel very um, unsure of myself, but after a couple of, uh, after a couple of years of doing it, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good now, but the basis I got in school was fabulous. Okay, thanks. Uh, Amanda. Hi, um, is it okay if I answer the last question and this one together? Oh, did I, I miss you? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'll make yeah. it brief though. <laughs> um, I just, because I just wanted to say for, you know, valuable skills um, that I got from ACC, well, first, you know, thank you to the biotechnology program because you prepared me wonderfully for all three positions that I've had at Fujifilm. And I've been able to stand beside people with PhDs and work alongside with them. And they wouldn't know, you know, what level my degree was because I was able to do the work right there with them. And it gave me the confidence to do you know, and, and got to where I am now. And so I, I definitely appreciate everything that I have taken from ACC. Um, Joey mentioned pipetting and I laugh because I have done pipet trainings for our company. And again, they have, you know, bachelor's, master's, PhDs. And, you know, I'm the one sitting there telling them how to use a mechanical pipette, a repeater, um, even how to eject the tips off. And it just, it made me giggle because I, you know, I thought I, it makes me proud that I went to ACC. Um, and there were d definitely multiple other skill sets that I got from ACC, troubleshooting definitely being one. Um, like Marsha said about failing your essays, you learn just as much from those as you do your successful ones. Um, another one that rings in my ear every time I hear it, I'm like, ah, one of my professors said this, is, is if it's not written down, it didn't happen. And that's so true. You know, I'm in QA now and everything that I do is heavily analytical. Um, everything I've done for the three years that I've been there. Um, and so like I have this eye that when things are put before me, I'm, I'm trying to find out the story. I'm reading the story. What happened? How did it happen? Prove to me that this is the result that you got and, and why you're saying that is an accurate result. Um, and I saw someone pop up in their comments, data integrity. And that's so true because um, just this year, we we actually had someone that was not being completely honest with the way that they were doing their assays. And so um, the, be, having the ability to search and find the reason why something was done or how it was done is very important. And in auditing, we found out that, you know, someone had been maybe being a little bit dishonest for about a year or two, and uh, they, they had to let that person go. Um, so all of these skill sets, you know, thank you for that. Um, something that, I mean, it's really hard to answer the question what I wish I had learned because I did learn so much there. Um, but because I am so heavily in quality for the whole three years that I've been there, um, of course, I'm going to kind of go towards the quality aspect of things. And so we do, we did have an online um, QA uh, semester, which was amazing. And I know most people probably think of quality assurance as maybe kind of like a boring job or it's not the funnest one to go to. You know, everyone's really interested in doing the wet work and the research and that's all fun. And I enjoyed all of that, um, but it's still just as important. And so um, one of the things that I find myself teaching myself right now in my job is just industry guidance. You know what, uh, we did learn some of the guidelines and um some of them I'm having to reteach myself now about them. But um, like when we're running the assays, again, it's analytical that I work with. And so when we have these assays, it's what, what guidance and, and why are we doing this with this assay? Um, when do you need three times triplicate runs? Or when do you need 
three different, two analysts on two different instruments, all these guidelines that run how you qualify a method, how you verify or validate a method, what's the difference between qualification and, and validations and things like that. Just a little bit more on the industry guidance. Great, thank you. Um, Joey. Uh, so just to touch base with what Amanda said, I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I got a lot of good training. It was baseline training. I mean, I could have launched into, you know, if I would have went to like the state crime lab, I wouldn't have been doing anything I'm doing today. Um, you know, so like go, going into a firm, you know, industrial fermentation, I learned uh, everything on the job you know, outside of just the laboratory skills that I've already discussed, uh, you know, sanitary clamps, uh, sterilization practices, cleaning practices, sanitary pipe design. Um, I actually was able to bring auto, uh, my AutoCAD experience from high school. I had a lot of architecture classes in high school. And uh, so I was able to, you know, work on PNIDs and drawings of equipment uh, definitely did a lot more equipment related things because I was mecha uh, mechanically inclined and they they threw me at it. You know, I, I spent hours uh, pulling apart valves and piece by piece and writing it down because we didn't have manuals for some of this stuff, uh, which is kind of why I'm in charge of it today. But, uh, you know, so I, and I don't I don't know how you'd really apply that to to schooling like a, unless you had a class or a system that was designed around uh, a curriculum designed around you know industrial biotechnology I mean if it's you know a lot of what we do is a little different than what pharma does so let's say you had a pharma based class right and you're doing CGMP you're teaching students all, all the all these things or whatever a lot of that does not apply to me and, you know, we sometimes like, you know, sometimes we're, we're, we're putting runs together with duct tape <laughs> in, 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 in like a laboratory sense where like, you know, oh crap, the tubing ruptured. What do we do? Well, grab ethanol, grab some snips, douse, some, douse the snips in ethanol, snip it, put it, you know, put it, you know, down, douse your uh, tube to tube connector and you splice it together and, you know, you, you wash that DO and you pray to God that it doesn't drop like a rock, <laughs> you know, because then you know you're getting contaminated <laughs> or you're foaming or, or whatever. So, um, you know, those kind of skills, I, yeah, like a lot of that was just on the job, uh, just so much. Like, um, so I, how to bring that in? I mean, I, I've worked with uh, Mindy and Dr. Warden over at LCC and have brought some equipment that we were just gonna throw out. Um, I mean, I think last time we discussed like he was doing some PICIA work in there. So like anything to bring that into the lab and just get students uh, at least familiar with some of the equipment. Cause I didn't even, I, di I didn't even, I had no experience with pump tubing of any kind of parasaltic pump, I, I, none. I, I hadn't even read about it, heard about it or anything. And that's just the fermentation. That's like the industry standard. Um, I talked to some people from Emergent. Uh, we've actually hired people from Emergent. And you know, th there are some similarities to what we do and what they do, but then there's a whole lot that isn't. Like for example, they don't have any DO pros. So when we got people from over there, they had no idea about DO. We had to train them on DO, uh, how to calibrate the probes and things like that. So anyway, I, but that's just a bit. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks. All right, next slide. If it's okay. So back to Daniel again. Uh, was the technology you learned in school the same or similar to the technology you use on the job? So was it industry standard, I guess? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So everything we do pretty much um, is based on what I learned in school, pretty, uh, very aligned with whatever we did again every job or every lab or every uh environment you go they do the same thing but within their own techniques and ways but at the end of the day it's the same thing so yeah pretty much everything we do in terms of discovery protein process development cell culture it's up it's up to standards with industry and obviously the industry has to be aligned and up to standards with fda so 
the answer is absolutely yes, I guess. Okay, good. Uh, Marcia. I would say the technology I learned is very similar um, to what I, I'm doing now, um, mainly because technology is changing so fast and I was not on, it took me a little bit of time to get through the program um, it, where I was in that part of my life. And, and technology moved so fast that sometimes we were bringing new technology in at the end of the semester um, for us to try and get our hands on so that we would have an introduction to it. And, um, and I'm very happy, very, very happy to report that I do not have to do um, cell counting by hand anymore. Um, I was taught how to do it, but I'm really glad that I, that's not one of my skills that I have, that I do in my job. But that's not fair. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. Yeah, some base skills were taught to us that fortunately, I, I'm very fortunate that I don't have to, you know, eyeball cell count and that um, the samples that I take, um, I don't have to do by just visual inspection of my cells to try to guess how they're doing. I have technology at my fingertips that will tell me exactly um, what my PO2, my PCO2, my glutamine, my glutamate, you know, what the lactate is and what the pH is doing. And, and so I'm able to um, use, um, technology that's out there um, to help me know more about my cells more than just that I feel them. And I don't think they're happy. They look a little stressed, but I, I, I have the technology to be able to know for sure what they're doing and how they're reacting and if they are stressed. Um, I think the technology that we had at the ACC biotechnology program was always trying to get us on the cutting edge of what was coming out. But again, technology changes so fast that by the time we got out, what's actually been OQ into a business might be still far ahead of what I was exposed to. OK, uh, Amanda. Um, I would say the technology that we used in school is extremely similar to what we used in our analytical labs. Um, I had experience with using Unicorn software on Acta, and that's exactly what they used here. Um, you know, and on most of the instruments, they're very similar. If they weren't exactly the same, it wouldn't be very difficult to go from one uh, version of an instrument to another. All right, thanks, Joey. Yeah, yeah. so most of the basic lab, you know, your scales, your pipettes, all that, the microscope, all that equipment is generally the same. Um, uh, you know, the, the only big difference was, uh, you know, my, my Orgo Chem, they had a GC. Well, actually, no, no, I, I would say the GC at Orgo Chem was a little bit better than some of the GCs I injected on when I, uh, I was at, uh, I was at MBI early on. Uh, actually, I don't think we've gotten new ones. <laughs> um, you know, but the HVLCs, uh, were definitely newer, more advanced, you know, they, you know, within a, half hour, you could get most of everything you wanted from a decent organic acid profile, like acetic, pyruvic, humeric, those things will all spit out within like 30 minutes or so. Uh, so, um, you know, but that, that would be something that I think, you know, LCC's program could benefit from is just a little, little more tech, uh, for like, uh, industrial, like, uh, you know, it would have been great to get my hands on a YSI ahead of time because those things are the most temperamental machines I've ever come across in my whole 11 years of experience. We have, we have three of them in series, just in case they don't work. And I can tell you, we have had all three of them not work at the same time. One of them is brand new, brand new YSI. Finally got some, some money and got a brand new YSI instead of the old models that we've been looking at. We name them, they're personified, it's hilarious. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that answers the question. All righty, thank you. Let's go to the next question. Um, so this uh, is kind of to lead into the, the to Lisa's segment, but what math skills do you, do you use to accomplish your work? And did you learn them during your biotech training at school or on the job? So we'll start with Daniel. Yeah, so we do a lot of, calculations to make a media uh, so ratio dilution things of such 
basic uh, C1, V1, C2, V2, uh, uh, calculating different concentrations. And most of that uh, are the skills you learn during your basic classes. And when you take biotech classes, obviously they expand more on in a sense that you use it within the, uh, within the experiment you're doing. So you really understand. So you even build on more on, on those skills, fully even understand it more. Um, so pretty much, I don't think, I, I, I can't think of anything in terms of calculation that I do right now that I wasn't, didn't learn during my biotech training. Pretty much everything was, was, was taught to me during my, those biotech classes. And obviously once in a while, when you re, when you come back to them after a couple of months or years, you have to do a little brush up, but the whole oh, most fundamental was taught during my biotech classes. Okay, good. Uh, Marcia. Um, I definitely agree with Daniel on that. Um, I did learn a lot of uh, um, how to do calculations um, to make sure that you're getting the, the end result of what you're looking for, you know, but I have to admit the one thing I, I didn't come from my biotech program, but stoichiometry. My chemistry teacher was not joking when he said, you will use this. And I just was like, no, I won't. And I use it every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that is, I didn't learn it in my biotech, but I am very, very thankful that my chemistry teacher loved stoichiometry. So. All right, thanks. Amanda. Yes, yeah, so we use so many different calculations in QA, um, one of my, the things that I review is the calculation. So if our QC um, teams perform the assay and use any calculations, I have to be able to verify those calculations. Um, something important, and it's such a basic skill that we learned is like solution prep and those calculations for um, molecular weights and the C1B1 as um, Daniel mentioned earlier. And I have an example from, because we're a contract facility, so we contract with different clients. And one of our clients, um, we had to scratch an entire drug product batch for them because our buffer prep team miscalculated the polysorbate 80. And instead of making it an 8, 8x solution, they made it an 8,000x solution. And so they didn't find out until the product was already made. and <sighs> other assays were showing some results that were funky. And so they went back and did a full review uh, of the, uh, yeah. the matrix. Yes, so that's, that's very important. It's such a basic thing that we should all know be, and then have the skill to be able to do. So um, all of those calculations we have to verify, linearity, being able to graph, um, not only being able to graph though, but also analyzing the results, which is very important because you, you can get a result and plug in some numbers and, and come up with a result, but then you have to say, well, what does this mean? What is this number telling me? Is it something about the product? Is it something about the activity or whatever? Um, so, and all those things we did learn in the biotechnology program. I, I really don't think there were many calculations that I had to learn on the job. I had some, maybe some assays that I had never come across like bacterial aggregation assays, um, but the calculations themselves, averaging, standard deviations, uh, percent CVs, all of that came. I already knew it from um, ACC. So the calculations themselves, I didn't learn on the job. I learned them at school. Okay, thanks. Uh, Joey. Yeah, so I mean, I complimentary to everyone else. I mean, I've, all of the math uh, I was taught <laughs> Uh, in college, yeah, for sure. A um, lot of it was not applicable right away. Uh, you know, I took those early on, and if you don't use it, you lose it. So I definitely, uh, definitely lost some, but my, I quickly gained it back on the job. I mean, doing algebra in your head, uh, never thought I'd really be doing that. Just didn't really even think about it. So um, that was interesting. Uh, you know, getting you know, we, we're, we're not, we're not hampered by the restrictions of like some, some of the QAQC. So we can like make a solution on the fly without signatures or verifications and, 
and dump it in a tank or um, you know neutralizing stuff things like that so a lot of a lot of these uh, I wasn't necessarily good with fractions and decimals um, we'd moved around a lot when I was younger and I just happened to miss like that was like you know the time when they teach it so uh, but I got re real good real quick um, so um, <laughs> I was so uh, the job just solidified the math that I had learned during getting my degree, uh, no doubt. Um, and it made more sense. It was like, ah, this is why I was taught this. You know, definitely stoichiometry that's every day. You know, yep. I, mean, <laughs> I, I I've I've made batch records, or whatever, and that's that's all that is is, is grams per liter. This, you know, we'll we'll get stuff from clients, and it'll be in all sorts of different kind of units and we're like oh okay well we don't work in that let's somehow we got to get to grams per liter sometimes we have to sometimes we have to make the solution and then like figure out the density uh like you know sometimes we we have to do work just to make our batch records that that has that happens all the time um you know but then one thing i mean i i only took calc one um i didn't do that great in it <laughs> uh to be honest but uh you know, I, I've done a lot of process engineering at my job. And one of those was, you know, swapping out a heat exchanger for a smaller size because the one we had had 128 holes in it. And I was the one that had to hand clean it after each time. So 128 holes and it was bolted on with flanges or whatever. So I gladly dove into my, uh, it, my, my um, supervisor's calculus book uh, learned the math, did the math, and uh, was able to, you know, get what I wanted installed. So, but I mean, I, having that background from school was critical. All right. Thank you. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to skip this. We're kind of running out of time. And I'm gonna ask if there's other people in the workshop, other participants that would like to ask the panel some questions and you can just go ahead and unmute and ask your question. So free for all. <laughs> Hi, this is Lisa. And I would like to ask Marcia, I'm fascinated by all the stoichiometry you use. Could, <laughs> could you give us just one quick example of what you mean when you say that or how you use it? Um, well, when um, I'm at a position now where I'm actually writing, um, uh, writing NPRs, um, I'm writing SOPs, and some of the um, calculations that come from the manufacturer that I'm basing off of uh, their manual or it's not in it it's um, kind of the same way Joey said it's like you're giving me kilograms per what and I I literally have to line it all up and then of course there's been other batch records that I look at um, and it says to do a calculation and I'm just like okay but you're you're giving me this you're, you're starting me off in grams, but I'm supposed to give you my answer in milliliters. And there's Thank nothing you. between yeah. that's showing me how I'm supposed to get there. So I have to kind of go off to the side and do my own calculations to make sure that the calculation they're giving me um, is correct. Um, and we pretty much do that, um, do uh, changing of anywhere from, they've given us a weight and I've got to get it to liters somehow. Mm. And so, and I will spend quite a bit of time just um, making sure I've got everything ready. Um, um, when our batch records are um, gone through QA and, you know, they, you have to write it out, um, the calculations. And, and this is the part where I actually will do my stoichiometry on there just to make sure that nothing is missed. Mm -hmm. um, because again, we don't want a media that's prepared um, that's going to go to the babies to be wrong. Um, so I take that part, take that part really seriously. That's yeah. great. Thanks. And, and sometime offline, I'd love to see examples of these calculations, but we don't have to do it right now. Okay, excellent. I'd love to see it. <laughs> I've got some in the bag, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You don't have to work them out right now. <laughs> All 
Okay, I have to say it. It's so good to see you guys. Oh gosh, I just can't believe yeah. it's been that long. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah, I graduated in 2017. And I have to admit, um, with my degree, I have been actively employed in my field since 2017. Wow. Um, Marsha, I have a, I may have not heard you right, but I just, I thought you said you check for linearity. Are you actually doing residual plots? I mean, am I, can you explain what you meant by linearity or I, did I misheard? Uh, that you wasn't me, but I will. <laughs> Um, but we do that with our trending um, of our cells, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm at a lack for the word right now, um, when we are doing our, um, um, when we're looking at glucose consumption, um, trying to get the base average underneath. So we have calculations that we work with that to make sure that our glucose, is that what you are wondering about? No, okay, that, I wasn't sure. I'm not sure someone said we're checking for gra the graphs, if they're linear, and I'm like, really, are you actually, there's like these plots to check if they're... Yes, so um, there we go. in, in the was quality it department. Yeah. Yes, it was me, Amanda. <laughs> um, yes, so we check linearity on on a variety of our assays. And so it could be anything from uh, a qPCR assay or an HPLC. It's it's just, uh, most of it is setting, um, oh, I can't think of the word now. When I'm talking, my mind goes blank sometimes. But um, the, the acceptance criteria for assays, a lot of it has to fall within a linearity and a certain percentage um, within that linearity. So you're looking at R squared? We are. Most of them. You, uh, go ahead. Sorry, do you also do further at diagnostics like plotting your residuals or is this too much? Uh, I just I just want to know how much how much you guys do. Um, do you know what it, I, it would depend on the client because we are client driven. So it depends on the types of assays that they require for their product. Um, some clients uh, would like for us to have um, like spikes and spike recoveries. And so they have to have a certain percentage where we're recovering a certain percentage of the, whatever it is that we're testing, whether it's a protein or um, a cell count, a, a number of plaques formed or whatever. Um, and other times uh, we don't necessarily have spike and spike recoveries on all of the assays. Um, but they will have some kind of assay acceptance criteria for every single assay that we do perform. Um, again, that's discussions that we have with our analytical development team and the clients together. They work on the types of assays that they want for their product and what kind of criteria they want set on it. Hmm. Thank you. So I have uh, one last question in case, well, other people might have more questions, but I have one question. What advice would you give to biotechnology educators? Do we, do we want to go in yeah. order again or? Uh, yeah, you can do that if you want, sure. but what would you teach the teachers? Um, <laughs> be honest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we learn from you. Yeah, yeah. You already graduated, so you don't have to worry about your grade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need your help. I think, I, well, I always, I think it's, if you're in the biotech, you should, you should be only in it because if you really love the field, it shouldn't be just like, oh, I'm going to nursing. No disrespect to nurses, but I'm going to the nursing because it's a stable job. So I think it would be really critical for the instructors to bring out the beauty of it and show how you can branch out in different fields i was just talking to somebody like when i was in my undergrad telling them oh the biotechnology is amazing i love it like it was love at first when i first started my first class and they were telling me well i'm really into plants and then we were just talking about allergies right like couple like last session and i told them, well there's all these things you can do with allergies and stuff like that so i think it's it's very critical and important to discover and digest the interest of your students, which my instructors did. 
and then perfectly fit you wherever you want to be and wherever they, they think you would be, whether it's industry, whether it's academia in the future, and what kind of academia, what kind of industry? Do you want to, uh, I don't know, do you want to be manufacturing, R&D, prof, PD? Uh, and as Amanda was saying, and like she started somewhere else, now she's in QA, QC. So yes, there's still a lot of things will change, but I think it would be important to digest your students' interest and fully really recognize what their goals are and what they want to do in future rather than kind of telling them what to do and just more mostly understand them and then help them build their path for them and they're better rather than showing the path i don't i don't know if i can did I put it out clearly or not well i would say um if i was to tell my professors um what to um what to teach um the 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 lab basics i got were fabulous and i couldn't have asked for a better program to go through um like daniel was saying that there is so much out there with uh um you can take a biotech degree and literally you can go anywhere with it um which we actually did address in class or, you know, they, we went and job searched and, you know, did interviews and did the whole nine yards. But the one thing that I would uh, say that it could have been added to it is to, um, to broaden, broaden your, um, your expectations, um, raise your expectations. Um, I think a, uh, a lot of people get out and they get into a job and like, oh, I got a job in my career and my chosen field and all that. And just realize that there's, with, with what you learn, there is, the world is your oyster. You just got to know where to go find it. So, um, I wouldn't say this is an advice because most of the professors actually did this, but it's something that I definitely um, would encourage all professors to do is to encourage the students to think for themselves and to find answers for themselves. Um, I remember a couple of my classes specifically where um, we would we would have a question and their first first response was, well, did you try to find that answer out yourself? Um, and then if we did find the answers, then we would share that with the class. And so it was almost like we helped learn it ourselves, but also our, our co-students also. And so um, we all grew together as a group, and I think it made us all stronger for it. I agree with that. Mindy, we can't hear you. <laughs> so uh, you're talking about like peer teaching, mm -hmm. students I mean, teaching other students and Yes, I mean, our together. professors all definitely taught us, but they, we had a couple of classes where they intentionally made us work harder for the information and it, it made us better for it. Yeah. Oh, good. All right, Joey. Um, I, I don't know. It, it was really good. It was, uh, I, I don't know what micro looks like now at LCC, but I know when I was going, it was definitely more geared towards like, you know, getting nurses to the nursing program or something of that nature. But I, I strongly disagree. I, I did, there's so much microbiology that I learned in that class that translates directly to my job. So, um, you know, like I, I never touched a, uh, you know, it was the only class I touched a, um, oh, why am I blanking on the name? Uh, Oxoid jar, you know, and we use oxoid jar to grow our anaerobic plates all the time. Um, and we, you know, the identification of counting colonies, the microscopy, I've done, done grand staining, um, trying to do, uh, trying to figure out what, you know, what the contaminant is. Um, so that, that was really, that was really good. Um, but I, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I, everybody's answers were great. I don't know if I have much to add to that, um, you know, aside from somehow trying to get a little more industry into uh, the classroom. But like everybody has said, it's, it's so diverse, 
you know, like, I mean, I, I've seen algae, we, we've done algae fermentations, but not the algae fermentations that you see being done outside. And all the ones I've seen, I've seen racks on walls. I've seen pools. I've seen bags in the ocean. I've seen, I, I, you know, I, like not personally, but that, yeah, that's what I've, I've observed. Um, and any like plants, I mean, you know, it's, there's, there's so much, there's so much application to this, you know, especially now with, you know, with CRISPR out there, I, I couldn't even imagine, don't envy you guys, <laughs> but, I, but I will, I do want to say this, this might rankle some feathers, but I, you know, I have had some classes at Michigan State University, I actually had to take some of the same classes, and they were not as good as like, like, for example, the physics lab at LCC is far superior than MSU's, hands down by far, you know, TAs go in there, they teach the labs, it, it, you know, and it's just not, it's not as inclusive. It's not, there's a lot of peer work done at, on, on, and, and it's just, you're, you're, you feel like a number up at university. You know, I've been there, I had the experience, it wasn't a good one. Um, and it was extremely hard to, that's why I don't have a bachelor's degree or anything else, because uh, it was, it was uh, difficult to do any of that work, how, especially because it was so different from my community college experience, um, where it was hands-on and I was immersed um, while I was working around the clock when the bugs were alive. So night shifts, rotating the two week rotating shifts, night shifts, evening shifts. I, you know, I've got three kids, so it's, it was not difficult. It was very difficult to finish that tree. I didn't, um, but 11 years later, didn't really need it. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. I think we kind of talked through the break. I'm going to let Pornmina tell us what we're doing next. <laughs> <laughs>